So some people put on the sculpture and they can feel empowered. Well, when I put on the sculpture, I know I felt empowered because I, you know, already <clears throat> I'm such a believer in the idea of a Wonder Woman and the idea of being more than I always feel I can be, knowing that I have that within me, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like Many times when we associate the idea with Wonder Woman, we kind of sort of touch something very deep within us. You know, if, if somebody's feeling lousy and you saw them and you say, girl, you're such a Wonder Woman. You may not think that you are, but you are. And, and wow, you've done some pretty incredible things. And you say it with all honesty because you really feel that way about this person who is feeling pretty lousy right now. There is almost, in my opinion, a, a sort of chemistry that takes place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we immediately have a more positive feeling about ourselves. Even though we weren't feeling that way, a couple moments before. I don't know if anyone in this room have felt that, but you know that's part of the being part of a supportive group of women who will be the ones to see who you are, even on the days when you are not feeling that way about yourself. One of the other questions I wanted to ask you is, you know, being, you know, really dreaming the dream here. It's like, what do you think might be the most advantage we have as a human race if there were no gender stereotypes? I think we're moving toward that slowly. We're moving toward that time, and that will be Wonderful. I think that will be a very interesting time where we would recognize all kinds of gender presentations. Boys can cry. They could ask for directions. They could go to doctors. I mean, sky's the limit. Girls like me could play ping pong and win. You know, uh, we could be in a classroom and be smart. We could be in a meeting room and answer the questions. You know, the joke that it's not such a joke. Um, if we are here in this room and had a meeting and uh, all of us are women to start and one man comes in, it still is that much of the focus gets turned on that man, turned to that man. And if that kind of thing didn't happen and we could wear what we want, be what we want, and be authentic, um, that would be such a different world and quite a wonderful world. I look forward to seeing it more and more, but it is coming. It is coming. And I do hope all of us here this evening have that opportunity to experience something like that in this lifetime. To know, for those of us who know younger little ones coming up, to know that they could perhaps uh, live in a world that would be a better place, uh, a place without the level of discrimination, the level of judgment that we have dealt with for so many years. Brings me to my next question. I've been looking at all these amazing pieces you have, and I'm wondering if anyone in the audience or anyone else looking at this video 
would wanted to get in touch with you, wanted to purchase these items. Tell me a little bit more about your work, how it's for sale, what do you have that's available right now? Well, I said there were three series in this room, and uh, the work is available for sale. And it was funny, we, I was just on Fox News, and I was told they wouldn't want to put on my sculpture, um, but bring it. And the first thing the two anchors wanted to do was put on the sculpture. So it was um, um, Greg Kelly uh, and Rosanna Scott. Rosanna, Scott, Rosanna yeah. Scott, though. So they put it on, and she said, how much are these? Um, and I said, they're $20,000. And I said, would you like six? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Greg Scott said, well, uh, let's see if we could bargain her down, or something like that. So the work is for sale. There is an interesting series in the, um, uh, that are matted over there called Gender Scrambling, and uh, they're $750. So my work is $750 to $20,000 in this room, although there's a bronze upstairs that's uh, $55,000. So if you tell me how many you want before you leave tonight, I'll have them wrapped. <laughs> wrapped and ready to go. Wrapped huh? and ready to go. Mm. Well, one day I hope to own one of your pieces. I hope so. It would be my pleasure. So one of the things that I was doing prior to getting ready for this interview was really looking at some of the statistics out there on what's happening with women in the world. And you know, when I started in my own career, I worked in insurance and in investments and in banking. I moved on to you know, marketing, publishing, and for a good part of my life, I have always volunteered and I found that whether it was in a profit situation or a non-profit situation, I always faced some form of gender stereotyping. And it had nothing to do with how good I was at my work. It had nothing to do with my capabilities, when I came in early, but I've left late. You know, no matter how much I tried, and I guess, you know, what was great about that experience, and every experience can be great because there's so much to learn from it. Even the worst experiences in our lives make us into the wonder women and the wonder men that we are. So there was a recent study done, and it's actually this year, March 14th, a UK organization called the 30% Club, a group of founders and CEOs who are committed to bringing more women onto corporate boards. And I just got this report this morning, uh, published a report called Cracking the Code. And they published 10 myths about women in the workplace. And I thought it would be really important to read these myths to you and to let you know that if you'd like a copy of the report, that I could send it to you. The first myth that they, they were able to crack was women don't aspire to senior leadership roles. The second, women don't stick it out to make it to the very top. The third, childbearing stops women getting to the top. The fourth, women don't get to the top because they lack confidence. Five, women lack the leadership qualities needed at the top. Six, women don't have the networks that open the doors to the top. Seven, senior women 
Senior women leaders pull up the career ladder behind them so that no one else gets assistance. Eight, high potential programs are fast tracking women. Nine, form formal flexible working arrangements ease women's route or route depending on American or British, to the top. And bus the business case for gender diversity, ladies and gentlemen, the tent met is that it is working. And if it is working, why change it? So these are 10 myths that they were able to crack the code on because they're all not true. And are you surprised to hear any of these? I would find some of them true. I would find some of them like women don't have the networks that men have to be true. That's why an organization like Wonder Women is very good because it's networking and you can get support and you could help each other. So I support what you're doing, Thank Aaliyah. You. And um, there were a couple others. Do women have the leadership? When I told you that my friend only received one third of the manuscripts, the theater manuscripts, I would say that women don't get the training the same way men get the training. Uh, for leadership. I believe very sincerely in women's colleges because I think uh, women's colleges are very important in terms of um, in terms of allowing women to excel without the fear of being ostracized as a girl by the boys in the room. So it's, it's, it's very uh, peeling away the onion. There's broccoli underneath. <laughs> it's very convoluted and, and, and very, very difficult. So yes, they are myths in some respect. But in other respects, I think some of them are true. And I think we have to accept them and change, change it. When I do the Holocaust Heroes series and I highlight fierce females, this is how I show that a woman can be strong. And I think as gender fluidity comes into practice more and more, women will be allowed, if you will. Culture will allow women to be women and strong, and men to be men and show vulnerability. That's the goal.